Hello, welcome to e Shala. My name is Dr. Ishwar Bhatt. I was the university librarian of Bits Pilani, Rajasthan. And at present, I am the chief librarian of Presidency University in Bangalore. I will be speaking to you and discussing about marketing of library and information services. The purpose of this lecture is to introduce to you the various aspects of marketing and then how they can be applied in the context of libraries. By the end of this module, you will know what are the basic elements of marketing. You will also know about the marketing in the context of libraries. You will know the various marketing skills and strategies which librarians adopt in order to further the objectives. You will know how they measure the effectiveness of marketing. You will know the ways of marketing e-resources besides traditional printed materials. You will know some of the ways in which both printed and online materials can be marketed. There is considerable misunderstanding regarding what is marketing is about. In fact, in the context of library information services, many senior professionals hesitate to use the word marketing. They say, why library is such an important, it's a sacred organization, it's an educational center, it has got knowledge and uh, I mean, why should we use, bring the concept of marketing to the context of libraries? Their main objection is, when you talk about marketing, we bring concepts such as discounts, sales pitch, inducements, persuasion, and then sometimes even uh, wrong information. So all such activities are taking place when you talk about marketing. Their main objection is, why we should bring such a concept into the library and information field? But then, if we really understand the significance and importance of this term marketing, it denotes and it, it connotes much more than this sales pitch and the, the tactics which many sales people use. It is much more than this uh, ta sales tactics. I, I usually give a quick reply when somebody raise their objections to use of marketing libraries. I say, when you know, temples do the marketing, holy people do the marketing, churches do the marketing, government does the marketing, NGOs do the marketing, why not we also do the marketing? What is wrong with that? So it is perfectly fine according to me. The reason is, marketing is much beyond the sales pitch. It all says that you have to put the customer at the center of the organization and design the services to meet the customer satisfaction. Of course, when you design the services and provide a quality service to the customer which satisfies him, it also brings profit to the organization which has come up with the service. So finally, both the customer is benefited and also the organization also gets a benefit. To put it in a very layman's language, marketing is nothing but providing quality service which customer gets satisfied and in addition to quality service, pro providing quality service, you also tell loudly that we are providing this service. These are the two main elements of marketing. Now, what is marketing about in the real sense of the term? Marketing is about identifying the needs of present and future customers. It is about deciding what services and products we are going to offer. It is about ensuring that we can deliver these services 
at the right time. It's about telling the customer that these services are available. And finally, it's about determin determining the price at which we sell these services where appropriate. The question of price doesn't arise in all kinds of libraries. In fact, many libraries may offer all the services free. Take an example of a corporate library, wherein uh, the entire cost of running a library, whether you do photocopying, whether you do winter library, everything is borne by the organization. So it's totally free. But then, even if it is free, one should ensure that the services are sustainable. So if it is appropriate, one should be prepared to fix a price for it. In other words, make sure any services which you introduce free, but it has to be sustainable. In the case of many libraries, most of the services might be free, but some services may be charged. In such cases, we have to have a pricing policy, which is on the one hand sustainable, at the same time, it should be satisfiable to the customers. One shouldn't fix a price arbitrarily, which will discourage our customers from using the library. Now, let us discuss what are the functions of marketing. There are several functions to put briefly. First one is gathering and analyzing marketing information. That is, you are collecting information about the target mass market, about the users, about the using user population. What are the their reading habits? What sort of information they are looking for? Where do they get the information at present? Are there any competitors to us? This sort of marketing information has to be collected. Second one is marketing planning. This requires very detailed planning. The third one is product design and development. Even in the context of libraries. If you have to design a product, you have to give a lot of thought to it. It is not as if just you start a current awareness service or you start a bibliography service. Think about the various aspects of it, how to make it user friendly, how to, how to make it more effective. So a lot of background preparation is required to design a product or services. Then standardization and grading. If you design a product, make sure that it has got some standards and it has to go, it has to be a has uniformly followed branding, whether we can give a name for it, whether we can uh, give a very inspirational name for the product, then comes customer support service, that is a part of marketing. Customers should be able to get help whenever required. Are you going to provide a telephonic help? Are you going to provide email help? Is it going to be a 24 hours help or only during particular part of the day? So you have to set up the system for it. And pricing of products, is it going to be a price product or is it going to be free? If it is a priced product, how whether that is going to be acceptable to the customers. If it is going to be a free one, is it sustainable? Then comes promotion. Promotion is nothing but persuasive communication. In what way you can persuade the users to use your services? Then physical distribution. How do they access your services? Are you going to reach the services to reach the customers manually? Are you going to send it by email? Will cust or customers will have to come and pick up your services from the library, then come transportation. It's again similar to physical distribution and storage or warehousing, wherein the if you are uh, bringing out several leaflets for that matter, or brochure for that matter, or poster for that matter, do you have a storage facility for it? Can you arrange for the storage facility? Do you have a place for them to keep in the library? So the, these are some of the functions of marketing. Marketing approach, this is the important part of the marketing concept. Marketing approach is a strategy for promoting or selling a product or service by communicating the value of product or service to the customer. Some elements of marketing approach are, one is marketing analysis, then organization analysis, third one is implementation, and fourth one is control. What is marketing analysis? Marketing analysis is about determining the unique characteristics relating to your particular market and analyze the information which will help you in making decisions for your business. Marketing analysis will provide valuable data pertaining to your customers, pricing levels and competitors. The following are the essential parts of marketing analysis. One is industry description and outlook. Let us say, I'll give an example in the context of public libraries. In the context of public libraries, what is the industry description? It talks about the user population, customer population around the library, nearby in the, in the neighborhood areas, how many customers are there, what is their age groups, what is the support for education from the government, how many schools are there, what is the support of the government for recreation, reading habits and all this. So it's sort of industry description and outlook. That's what we talk about in the section on industry description. The second one is target ma population. That is, we are describing the target market. Again, coming back to the public library, who are the target users? Are they students? Are they retired people? Or are they professionals, doctors? So in detail analysis of the target market. So that comes under the target market section. The third one is competition analysis. Who are the competitors to the library? As I mentioned, competitors one is bookshop, 
televisions, computers, exhibition, entertainment programs. These are some of the examples of competitors to the library. Many of them want to lure your customers to their folds. The fourth part of marketing analysis is projections for various library services. For example, uh, what is the projection? Number of people who you think might join your library in the next five years. How many books you might need? What could be the library hours? How many staff you will be requiring? These sort of projections have to be made. Then comes regulations of the government. Is the government permitting you to have a park in front of the library? Will the government allow you to charge high fees for a premium service? So this sort of uh, regulations will form as a part of marketing approach. The second aspect of marketing approach is organizational analysis. What is this organization analysis? Organization analysis is a process of reviewing the development, work environment, personnel and operations of an organization. Conducting periodical detailed organization analysis can be a very useful way for the management to identify problems or inefficiencies that have arisen in the organization but have yet to be addressed and also to develop strategies for resolving them. Undertaking an organization analysis is helpful in assessing an organization's current well-being and capacity deciding on a course of action to improve the organization's long-term sustainability. One useful method of organization analysis is applying the SWOT analysis. SWOT is an acronym for strength, weaknesses, opportunity, threat. Let us give an example how SWOT analysis can be applied to the context of a university library. What are the strengths? The strength is you, are, you have a university's background, a supportive administration. There is a lot of dedicated faculty members, teachers. You have a captive student population. Example, I gave you. What are the weaknesses? One example is bureaucracy. Number two can be lack of funding. Number three can be many times ability non-cooperative use user population and fourth can be as an example of the building is not good enough third one is opportunities opportunities for more students opportunities for uh, more money from UGC opportunities for increasing the library fees opportunities for library venturing into some sort of extra revenue then comes threats what means the threats in a university library? It could be anything. It doesn't matter. The habit of reading is going down. The prices of uh, books increasing steadily. Databases become too prohibitive. I gave examples. So this sort of organizational analysis helps you to understand where we are and how to plan for the future. Another aspect of marketing approach is implementation. Implementation means execution, which in other words are the actual steps the company will take to achieve the marketing objectives. These steps may include running advertisements, running promotional events, putting up posters, launching websites, or sending mail shots. The implementation phase identifies the people for the various tasks, provides the budget, and makes sure that the marketing activities happen in the correct time and sequence. Controls, this forms again part of marketing approach. Control can be defined as a mechanism attempting to guarantee results as per predetermined corporate objectives and policies. The basis of control is the ability to measure. It compares what should happen with what actually happened or what is likely to happen. Good control systems often detect and rectify problems before it is too late. Control process has three steps mainly. The first one is set targets which are integrated with the overall marketing objective. Secondly, predetermining the method of measurement that is performance appraisal. The third one is measuring the results which are compared with predetermined targets and wherever things are not going as per the satisfaction corrective action has to be taken in other words controlling ensures that the marketing objectives are being followed up properly and effectively and wherever things go wrong very quickly the action can be taken to take corrective measures now once again we are coming back why marketing in the context of libraries the first thing is we all agree the reading habit has come down during the last couple of decades. There is a very conscious attempt to lure various people from the library and the reading habits and then they are attracted to other areas such as use of computers, television viewing, exhibitions and what not. So our the aim should be to bring back those customers who are our potential customers and who, who are being lured away. Once again, let us analyze who are the, uh, 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 I mean, our competitors. Our competitors are one is television, computers, exhibitions, so, uh, several uh, cultural programs, and of course, even uh, 
bookshops and they are our competitors. What all these people do is they lure away the customers from the libraries and then many of these are also uh, our I mean competitors and then uh, they are able to provide similar services at a much easier way. So, we should make a concerted effort to get all those customers back to our fold. That is one of the things. Second one is these, I mean by providing quality services, by doing effective marketing, by putting the customer at the center of all our activities, we will be providing quality service and uh, the quality service help in the growth of use of the library and that will help us to get more support, more funding from our sponsors and uh, other organizations and that will help us to carry forward our programs still better way. In order to understand customer needs, we need to categorize them into different subsets. This process is called as market segmentation. For example, in a university library, we can observe various categories of users such as teachers, postgraduate students, undergraduate students, distance learning students, non-teaching staff, etc. Segmentation can be done on the basis of various criteria such as geography, for example, urban users, rural users. It can be done on the basis of demographic, demographic criteria, for example, teaching, non-teaching, student, research scholars, etc. Segmentation can be done on the basis of benefits library offers, for example, a DVD member, children library members, etc. Segmentation can be done on the basis of usage, for example, a gold class member who gets 20 books at a time, a silver class member who gets 10 books at a time. Now tell me, now I am sure you will understand what is the importance of segmentation. Segmentation, once it is done, we can design the services which a particular class of user requires and then we can uh, effectively frame the policies which need, which satisfies the particular segment of users. Quality service. To put in most simple terms, quality can be defined as the service standard exceeding the expectations of the customer. I give you an example of a pen. This is a pen which I bought for 10 rupees. So when I say it is 10 rupees, what is your expectation? You expect it to write well, at least it should last in a year. It need not have stunning looks, but at the same time, if it falls, it should not break. But it should write well, it should not leak. That is your expectation. If this pen does their job, you can say it is quality. So quality does not mean that it has to be expensive. As long as it meets or exceeds the customer's expectation, it is quality. Quality has to be maintained in respect of every aspect of library work including physical facilities, book stock, personal service by staff, equipment, internet bandwidth, etc. Ensuring the consistency in quality is a difficult task especially in a service sector such as libraries. No public relation exercise can substitute a quality service. Libraries need to have an integrated approach to quality service by staff training, customer care meetings, written quality service standards, regular monitoring of quality by senior staff and staff motivation. Now let us discuss about what is this written quality standards. Every library I would suggest should have a written quality standards. It is a printed document which is prominently displayed in the library that specifically says what sort of services, what level of services are expected from the library. These quality standards have been developed in some of the libraries, in the British Council libraries in India, we used to display these quality standards for a long time. Some of the items, examples I will give you right now. For example, you say the library will be open from 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock for example. Another quality standard is every customer will be, re will be received by smiling staff. Another could be there will be a good display of books. There will be weekly display of minimum 25 books. All the books which are received will be processed within a period of one week. Every telephone will be answered in not less than three rings. Library will not be closed for more than three working days at a stretch. These toilets will be kept perfectly clean. 
tables will be cleared or the books every two hours. So, this sort of very specific commitment we make speaks about the quality the library services will maintain. At the same time, that will ensure consistency in the quality of service in the libraries. See, one of the things we must remember, it is easier to maintain a quality if it is a product, whereas in a service oriented organization, which is dependent upon the performance of several individuals, maintenance of quality is difficult. So, this sort of specific commitment from us about the quality will go a long way in maintaining consistency in the quality of service. Market research. What is market research? Market research is an organized effort to gather information about the market or customers. It aims to collect detailed information about the market size, needs and that of the competitors. There are various tools for market research in libraries. The first one is interaction with the customers. Ask the customers, ask your users, what do they expect from the library? What are their expectations? What do they need? It can be done by personal interaction. It can be done by using a questionnaire. It can be done by observation even. Second one is random customer service. You conduct surveys of customers by giving questionnaires. The third one is suggestion registers and boxes. You can keep suggestion registers in the library wherein the users can be encouraged to write their suggestions and these session registers have to be seen regularly and they have to be read cautiously with the purpose of getting ideas for library improvement and, and also to come up with newer services. Then is another market research technique is floor walking. Senior staff in the library can go around and ask the users what do they think about the library, what are the problems they are facing, what suggestions they have for improving the library services or new services. Another technique is use focus group meetings. In this you organize brief or small meetings with a small number of uh, customers they are invited and uh, with a specific agenda you ask questions to them and uh, they come up with ideas and in many of these customer care meetings focus group meetings i found they, have, they are of great help in uh, coming up with ideas and many times in the focus group meetings we uh, even get brilliant ideas and solutions to some of the naughty problems we have been facing there are also other techniques other tools for market research such as analysis of book issues, analysis of photocopy services, analysis of floor attendance and analysis of footfalls. All these can be used to get a better market information. Marketing mix. Marketing mix refer to the collection of elements which an organization uses to influence and focus on the target market. Mainly there are seven elements which fall in the marketing mix. They are called as seven P's. The first one is product or service. The context of library talks about what services the library is going to offer. Then comes price, that is prices for any of the services if we are going to charge. Then comes place. That is logistic, how the user can avail our services. Then come process, the procedures the user has to follow in order to avail the library services. And also various behind the screen activities for making available services. Then comes people, people is it, it talks about how the library staff skills can be upgraded to provide service. Then comes physical evidence, that is the ambience of the library, the physical facility you are offering in the library. Then finally the promotion. Promotion is the communication, a persuasive communication, which I will be talking a little more about the promotion in the next few slides. Nowadays, it is not enough if we just provide a good service. We need to broadcast what we do and this message should reach the customer quickly. Promotion consists of providing a means of persuasive communication to the greatest number of potential customers in the most cost effective method in order to persuade them to choose or use the services. The aim of promotion is to increase the customer base besides retaining the existing customers. Broadly speaking, the purposes are creating a broad mindset amongst the customers favorable to the library and telling the, the potential customers the availability of the service and convincing the customers the benefits of using the service. Let us discuss about the various promotional methods in libraries. The purpose of all this is to promote the use of library resources. The first one is mail shots. In other words, we send introductory letters to a large number of our target customers saying that these are the services we can offer. And the introduction letter carries a brochure of the library. Second one is we can come up with 
several brochures, leaflets and posters. It can be displayed in the library and also it can be displayed in several other institutions where our target customers are found. Third one is we can organize lectures, seminars, many of these on our own or it can be in association with other organizations. We can organize customer care meetings, we can promote, we can uh, organize promotional events, we can host several events in association with other organizations, we can organize several days such as teachers day, world book day, environmental day, UN day. Several, all these things uh, can bring more customers to the library. Another one is the uh, organizing of road shows. Let us say there is a seminar in, 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 in an institution. We can put up a small stall there about the library and give the various brochures. We can go to the classes, classrooms or universities and give presentations. There are several posters can be put up in the library which uh, speaks about new resources added. Emails is a great tool to promote the library. We can uh, send targeted emails. In fact, one can use any number, number of uh, methods. It is up to the imagination of the individual. We should not hesitate to push our products, push our services and we should make it a regular habit to be seen and to increase our visibility. Marketing of e-resources. Good libraries website is a prerequisite for marketing of e-resources. Library website needs to prominently link to the e-resources in order to increase the visibility. Secondly, internal marketing to the staff is important. The purpose is to make the staff aware of all e-resources and develop their navigational skills. Methods include running competitions for staff, conducting training sessions, vendor training sessions, creating online forums, etc. How do you promote e-resources by traditional methods? Number one is A to Z list of journals and library websites. Number two is access to e-resources through web app. Act. Number three, providing subject guides. Number four is banners, posters, brochures, emails, etc. Then publicizing in the physical library, then in the library newsletter, in-house magazines, face-to-face -face interaction, etc. Promotion through the web or internet. We can do various ways, methods of promoting through the web or internet. One is through emails, through screen messages on computer terminals, through online information tutorials, through table of content service, through RSS feeds, through wikis, through social media such as blogs and also by providing trials for use. To conclude, it is important that we market our library resources and services. But the prerequisite for marketing is quality service. We need to get adequate marketing information regularly. There has to be a well defined and well organized team. The staff skills need to be updated regularly. There has to be a road map for meeting the marketing objectives and this road map is, uh, map is called as marketing plan. There has to be a budget for the marketing and above all lot of enthusiasm is required. It is going to be a very interesting experience. The marketing activities have to be regularly monitored and the effectiveness has to be measured by maintaining proper statistics and examination of the usage.